What's happening? Why are we shaking? What's up? I think we might be in a sports car commercial. F-Sport Performance. That means that this IS500, graciously provided by the heroes at Auto One Group here in Toronto, is no normal F-Sport. It's not a full F, but with a 5-liter V8, quad exhaust tips, and LSD and adaptive suspension, it might as well be. And at 472 horsepower, it even has 56 more horsepower than the old ISF. But if you think about the fact that this car is basically a modded version of an IS that came out almost a decade ago, it can't possibly be worth the $72,900 Canadian starting price that Lexus is asking. Surely, can it? Let's find out. If you're new to Throttle House, no, no. we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. So, a luxurious rear-wheel drive sports sedan with a naturally aspirated V8. That's gotta be a home run, right? I found a baseball diamond, what do you want from me? It's actually not that simple because there was a time where V8, big displacement, big horsepower numbers meant king, top of the range, top of the class. But we've been in the turbocharged world for a while now and something like an S4 or a C43, even though it doesn't have 472 horsepower like this, is probably quicker. It's definitely quicker off the line with their all wheel drive systems. This is rear wheel drive only. The M340i, which competes with this as well, has the B58 motor, which we've already demonstrated can destroy this engine because we've done an LC500 versus Supra drag race and spoiler alert, the Supra destroyed it. And if you are just chasing acceleration numbers, this paltry 4.4 seconds to 60, and I can only imagine you get that with the best traction in the world, not only does it not match the cars I just mentioned, we're now into the electric world. So if Lexus had played the acceleration game just chasing numbers with this car, they didn't stand a chance. So what they've done instead is go for emotion. With this naturally aspirated 5-litre V8. line, almost seven and a half thousand RPM. And it bangs off the rev limiter as it upshifts. And it's not an all encompassing sound in the cabin. It's just, there's a, there's a tone to it. There's a note that lets you know you're in a V8. And I know that it's feeding that sound out of four exhaust tips, which Thomas and I disagree on a bit, but I think they're really cool. 
Now this transmission, the 8-speed, is a 10-speed in an LC500, and here we have the 8-speed, and it is absolutely fine. I don't think it rewards manual shifting as much as just staying in auto, if it weren't for the fact that Lexus is very good at paddle shifters, and these are very satisfying to press. However, things like downshifts, you know, I'm in Sport S Plus right now, which is the most aggressive, and if I downshift twice, it's a little bit slow. But on the upshifts, it's fast enough. Okay, so yeah, it might not be as quick as nearly everything in its class, but in the real world, that's still a ton of power. And when it sounds like that, who cares? All right, so in terms of power, bit of a win. The sound it makes, well, they've absolutely scored there as well. But for the price that Lexus is asking for this car, it needs to have that third thing. It needs to be a hat trick. Yeah, sorry. Thomas started this though. And that third thing is Lexusness. That's a word that is made up right now. And what it means is that the car has to be comfortable and nice. And it is. Probably the most important part about the, listen, the engine is unbelievable and I love it. And I'll pause what I was saying for a second so that you can listen once more. <laughs> oh, that's just wonderful. Just a little bit of LFA in those downshifts, just a bit. Anyway, what I was saying is that the Lexusness is the, the comfort and the insulation and the ride, and the ride in this car is really, really good. Even though I'm in Sport Plus right now, it's supple. Supple is the most important word here, because what I mean by that is that there's no bump on this road. This is like a broken up back road that's causing any form of jarring motion into my skull at all. It's comfortable. But it's not so soft that it's not controlled. It balances comfort and performance very, very, very well. Which means that this is an honest to goodness, hand on heart sports sedan in the good old fashioned way. Here's the thing. The steering in an M340i is better than this. It's sharper. The chassis control in an M340i is better than this. The differential in an M340i is better than this. This has a torsion, but it's not as sophisticated as what BMW does. But somehow, everything about this is better than an M340i. And that's what we call unquantifiables. The advantage to an M340i is that it's all wheel drive. Well, I mean, that's an advantage depending on who's asking because that right there is, is what I want. <laughs> I also wouldn't mind some snow tires, so just a little bit more grip. Right now we're on summer tires, which means that I'm gonna turn the traction control back on because there is enough power in this car to get you in trouble. And that's kind of why I like it because as I said, this is just a front engine, rear wheel drive V8 sports sedan with a limited sub differential. Put all those things together, turn the traction control off, and you can have a huge accident. That's kind of what makes these things fun. That's why you'd want one, not to have an accident. But the edge, the danger is there. Yes, it's an old recipe. Yes, it could be updated. But you don't ask your grandmother to update the recipe of her blueberry pie at Christmas because it's still delicious. Are Last you? of its kind. Last of its kind. Don't say that because when you do, every dealer just starts marking it up. Oh, that's right. That's we'll already happened. That it's already happened. Um, okay, so. It's quite chilly. It is quite chilly. I mine? have taken my gloves off just for this moment so I can be dexterous and point at things like <laughs> this front end. <laughs> yeah, so this is, so not only is this the IS500, this is the launch edition. So right. I, think, I think there's 500 in North America. Oh. So it's quite a rare thing. Um, it's a strange coincidence. IS 500, 500 launch editions. Five, yes, it's 500 F Sport yeah. performance I wonder, if they, I wonder if they know that. Anyway, <laughs> I, I, I've completely grown to like the new front end on this, right? I never disliked it. I know. I, at first I was like, I didn't know 
if I liked it or not, but now I'm at this kind of, especially with this, with this paint, this like kind of like flat, not flat. Well, I always get, I always get this. How do you say this? This is a non-metallic gloss. Gloss. Yes. Okay. And this is the paint for this is the special for the launch edition. It's called Incognito. So you can Incognito. go go in the car and you can look at anything on your phone and no one knows anything about it. Oh really? Yeah, all the sexy stuff. Like <laughs> like other Lexus models. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Uh, but yeah, in this light it's a bit it's a bit yellow. It's kind of it's not so much uh, chalk as it is nardo grayish. Yeah, so the, the thing is is that when the light hits this car directly or any kind of like gloss non-metallic paint, I find the, the car kind of gets a bit boring when the light hits it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. As soon as you have like shade and angles and then you can really see the lines in the car and that's when this thing looks really, and really this, good. And this has cooler lines, like this hood is more bolstered than the normal Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, interestingly, I feel like, you know, I'm just realizing now, because Toyota have a similar color to this and they call it cement. So they've, they've obviously saved the good names for Lexus. Yeah, it is probably the exact same color or it's within a shot. Very similar. They added like a dab of white just to change it technically, right? Yeah, um, but we've got the 19 inch wheels, we've got the black accents. Yeah. And this is, so this, one of the few differences that makes this the IS500 is that it has a two-piece rotor, right? It's not actually a two-piece rotor. I mean, it is, but it's not like a detachable two-piece rotor is the way I understand it. It is just literally two pieces. Pick and but surely the more exciting thing is the quad exhaust. Is it though? Indicative of an F model. Is it, is it more exciting? Because it, it could have been cool with real quad exhausts. And then they like squished them a little bit. What do you and mean? They're like stacked. That's the, that's the Lexus look. I don't, I, yeah, no, I know, it's not new to this, but I just don't like that. I don't know why. Oh, I think it's unique. Okay, I'll give unique. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, look, I think it's handsome. I think it stood the test of time, which it had to do, because it has been, it's been like 15 <laughs> years. I, this, I, this came out before yeah. I was born. <laughs> this I've is just, your grandpa's eye. I've just, I've just aged really quickly. <laughs> um, can we look at the interior now? Because it's cold outside, I don't want to talk about the outside anymore. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, this is the same as every other IS anyway. <laughs> you know, I'm glad that if you say it in a BMW, you also say it in a Lexus. Well, yeah. This, this, is, this is old now. It's real old. They, they did a very important update with this, making it a touchscreen. Yeah, that's a touchscreen now, um, which is still, it's still like last gen stuff though. It's not, it's not like cutting edge or anything. It is, but with CarPlay. Yeah, yeah it's good, it's fine. Problem solved. Um, and other things that, I always like in, in in these cars, even though they're not new, is that this gauge cluster is one of the coolest gauge clusters that has ever existed. Yeah, I don't think under 100 grand, is there a moving physical gauge cluster? N over 100 grand. Oh yeah, over what, 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 I've never seen one other than this, right? Like I love that you can, that you can push this button and it, oh my God, that's just so cool. It just feels so special. I do like that a lot. Oh, so this is, this is number 331 out of 500. Out of 500. That, that's not a special number. Yeah, but what is, number one? Other than anything other than number one. Yeah, but like the fifties, the hundreds. E even then, it's still it's either one or who cares, or but maybe five hundred. Also, because of that, we've got wood trim on the steering wheel. Be because it's the launch edition, we got the two tone seats. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and that's that's it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not much to say in here. Just kind no. of like. I think you and I have, we've had a lot of conversations off camera about this car. Yes. Because we're not, I'm not sure about it. You, you know, mean the IS500 in general? In general, well, first of all, dealer markup is it's just, it's just. That's not, that's not exclusive to this car. No, it's. That's it, all cars it's, right now. It's endemic more than it's ever been. Yeah, right? you know, There's a bad. pandemic and an endemic. There's a pandemic of dealer markup right now. <laughs> Um, and, and it's annoying, which means that even at this price, is, but let's talk about this at MSRP. If you're yeah. coming, if you're coming from like an M340i, I want this to be the best of everything. See, so, the, the mistake there is in the way you said that, because you're not coming from an uh, M340i, you are choosing this over an M340i. That, very that's what, specifically over that's what I mean. If you back to back this, right? you'd be like, oh. right, but it's a way older fitting car for new car pricing. And that's where it starts to get difficult. Yeah, but if you want a car that has a naturally aspirated V8, comfy suspension, reliability, and has Apple CarPlay and this cool digital gauge cluster, what else is there? No, and if you, again, if, right? if, you, if you think if you think of it as like a four-door LC500 with then, with yes. one more horsepower, 
then <laughs> then it, it starts to make sense, except this isn't quite the interior of the LC500. The LC500 feels special inside. This, no, and listen, this car is like one decision away from having a cassette player, yes. right? So I, I get what you mean, but at the same time, it's, I just kind of don't care about most of it. It's the reliability. It's the reliability, the naturally aspirated V8, the comfy ride, the fact that it is just a good old fashioned, honest to goodness sports sedan. Right. right? I that's, just... that's, what I, that's what I really dig about this. Like the M340i, even still, um, what, or what did we drive recently that was... No, we weren't emotional about the M340i. It, no. it, it didn't do anything for the heart, it just for the head. Yeah, exactly. But, but, like... but when it comes to reaching into your wallet, those are the two things that clash. I know, but, but again, I, I think that those types of cars are reaching too far towards being the M versions, or the AMG versions. They're trying too hard to be ultra sporty. Like the M240i, right? Yeah. That car is so close to being an M car, what is the point of it? Right? Well, do you, uh, what's the point of the M car, then? What's the, the point, point of either of them? Just this is like, it's loopy and it's sloppy. It, it's, it's, it's a big V8 comfy sports yeah, sedan. Yeah, this feels like a normal IS had sex with a Scat Pack Challenger. <laughs> That'd be a really, wow, that's, that's an image. Um, anyway, yeah, I think that that's why I like this so much. Because it's not trying too hard to be one. It doesn't have any, it doesn't have any oil coolers. It doesn't have any stuff that's going to make it for a track car. And no. they know that, and they're honest about it. And it's way too much money, I'll give you that. But it's really cool, and it's the last V8, so... Yes, but it's so much money that if you're getting the last of something, it knocks it real close to the Cadillac CT5V Blackwing, which is a manual supercharged thing. Wait, but how much is that? It's like 87 Canadian. This is 77 Canadian. It's it's close, but it's oh. bit but it's bigger. And when was the last time you were in something this size that had a V8 that wasn't a C63, which is now gone? I mean, yeah, the back seats aren't very comfortable. Yeah, but the CT5 V Blackwing is so good, and it doesn't feel any bigger than this no, when you drive I it. I know, but then you. But, but then the question is reliability and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so if you if you add reliability in, totally get it. If you don't really care, get a manual supercharged rear wheel drive tire killer. That's the answer. But I, <laughs> so I, I think for this car to make sense and for you to reach into your wallet, either either the residuals have to be amazing, or you have to be a fanboy. You have to have nostalgia for the last naturally aspirated V8 IS. And you know what? That is okay. Yeah. It's also okay to want some good old-fashioned Lexus reliability. James and I both agreed afterwards that were we to only own a car for a couple of years, then we'd still probably lean towards one of the Germans. But anything close to 10 years of ownership? It's not even a question. It's this. And yeah, we got into a bit of a discussion there, but this car is an interesting one. It's expensive and thirsty, and on paper is in pretty much every way behind the times. And yet, for the purists, that's its charm. In their eyes, whilst every other manufacturer in this class is releasing competent machines of apathy, Lexus has exercised empathy and created something they actually want. Just don't be challenging an M340i to a traffic light race anytime soon. Until there's an ISF at least. Thanks for watching. And we're gonna, we're gonna shake the screen, right? This isn't, this is just... Yeah, 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 absolutely, don't worry. Okay. It'll look great. I think it would look weird if the screen's not shaking. I think that'll work, that'll work.